the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
lesson is from the 8th chapter of Nehemiah, verses 1 through 3, 5, 6, and 8 through 10. The exiles have returned and rebuilt Jerusalem. Now Ezra the priest reads the law of Moses to them in the public square. When they hear it, they weep for their sins and for their long years in exile. But Ezra reminds them that the joy of the Lord is your strength. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all, could he, all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here ends the reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 19, found on page 223 and 224 in the front of your Bible. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all hands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning hand. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives life to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey and honeycomb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he has cleansing from my secret walls? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31a. The Apostle and Pastor Paul uses the metaphor of the human body to describe how intimately connected we are in the church. For this struggling congregation in Corinth, Paul delivers a vital message of unity that is a mark of the church today. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. 
Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Here in Korea.
Okay, Robert, you open it and let Tucker take out a piece of paper. Okay, that's teamwork. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, Tucker, what's on that piece of paper? Um, that's exactly right. It's Jesus's heavenly home, isn't it? And in the Bible, in John, it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in me also. There are many rooms in my father's home. So Mommy has... doesn't believe Jesus. Oh, she... <laughs> okay. Well, they... Um... So there are many rooms for us. There is always room in heaven for all of us. Okay. What's that next thing there? Take one, I think, let me see. That has your name on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Robert, is there one with your name on it? Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's one for Rory and one for Freddie. Can't get it out. He can't get it out. And here's Freddie's. And here's Rory's. Oh, hold that sweet pea. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, doctor. <laughs> okay, but you know what it says? It says it's a certificate of adoption. And it certifies that Rory has officially been adopted by God. And in Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 4 and 5, this is what it says. And those to belong to Christ before the world was created. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. He loved us. So he decided long ago to adopt us. He adopted us as his children with the rights children have. He did this because of what Jesus Christ had done. So what? So we are adopted by God. We, that, that happened long, long, long ago, before the earth was created. So we are his children. And he has a heavenly home for all of us. Those are two of the gifts that God has given us. Did we ask for those gifts? Yeah. Did we? Probably, we probably didn't ask for them specifically. And do we, do we, are I we, pray, are I we pray at night. Do you pray? That's absolutely fabulous. That's what we want to do. I just, I just say I love, I love Jesus. That's good. That's absolutely right. That's, so can we say a prayer right now? Can y'all hold your hands? Dear Jesus, thank you for the gift of your home and adopting us as your children. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today's sermon is contributed by Pastor Nancy Nyland. In our gospel reading today, we encounter Jesus returning to Galilee. In the verses prior to, the, to this in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has been baptized in the Jordan and then driven out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now filled with the power of the Spirit, Jesus comes to Nazareth, his hometown. It is the Sabbath. And so what does Jesus do? He follows his routine and goes to the synagogue. On this particular day, Jesus stands up to read and is given the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolls the scroll and finds a certain place and begins to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery to the sight of the blind. To the oppressed, go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of, of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture was fulfilled in your hearing. This is good news, my friends. The good news is that Jesus, the Messiah, has come. Emmanuel, God with us, has come to bring good news to the poor, to give release to the captives, to give sight to the blind, to free the oppressed. But the good news reveals
reveals bad news, sad news. There are poor people. There are people who are captive. There are people who are blind. There are people who are oppressed. In a perfect world, there would be no poor, captive, blind, or oppressed people. But of course, it was not a perfect world in Jesus' day, and it is not a perfect world today. After Jesus had read from the scroll, he rolled it up and sat down. And he said, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Jesus is the one who Isaiah speaks of. Jesus is the one who the Spirit rests upon. Jesus is the one who is the anointed. Jesus is the one who brings the good news, who gives us release, who heals, who frees. And notice that Jesus says today, right now, in your hearing, this scripture has been fulfilled. In the Greek language, has been fulfilled is in the perfect tense, which means that it is an ongoing action. The scripture isn't fulfilled and for, for all on that day, but continues to be fulfilled over and over again. Every day since the day Jesus reads the, read those words in the synagogue, every day Jesus has been fulfilling the scripture. Martin Luther talked about baptism being a daily dying to sin and rising in new life in Christ. Baptism is not a day, but rather a daily event, a way of life. In your baptism, you were claimed by God and given a new name, child of God. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. This gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us is a gift that each of us received in our baptism. What an amazing gift, the Holy Spirit. There is quoted about the Holy Spirit from Winston Prasad, a professor at Warford Seminary. It goes like this. The Holy Spirit does not make up for the absence of Jesus. Rather, the Holy Spirit mediates the presence of Jesus. The Holy Spirit does not make up the absence of Jesus. Rather, the Holy Spirit mediates, brings about the presence of Jesus. Every day, since the day Jesus read those words in the synagogue, every day, Jesus has been fulfilling this scripture. How does Jesus continue to fulfill the scripture he read from the scroll that day? Through us, through you and me. The spirit dwelling in us brings about Jesus, Jesus is present into the world today. Jesus' first sermon preached so many years ago is our sermon to preach and to live. We get to bring the good news to the poor, to care for the poor, to share with the poor, the economically poor, the poor in spirit, those with poor self-concepts, the poor of heart, the emotionally bankrupt, the ones who whine, poor me, the Holy Spirit working in us and through us to bring Jesus' presence into the world. We get to proclaim release to the captive. Those who are in prisons and jails, those who are captive to sin, those who are captive to the expectations of others, those who are captive to disease and illness, those who are captive to addiction, abuse, past failures, or regrets, the Holy Spirit working in and through us to bring Jesus' presence to the world. We get to give sight to the blind, love and care and compassion and truth-telling that will open closed minds and lead to the discovery of options and choices and bring priorities into focus opening new possibilities. The Holy Spirit working in us and through us to bring Jesus' presence into the world. We get to free the oppressed, practice love and respect and honor and equity and stand up and speak out for those oppressed because of gender, race, sexual orientation, religion, social class, age. The Holy Spirit working in and through us to bring Jesus' presence into the world. We get to do all of this. Wow. That is a tall order, a big responsibility. But we are never on our own. Surrounded by a faith community, 
We come to worship and praise, to hear words of forgiveness, to be renewed and fulfilled, nurtured and encouraged, graced and loved, fed and sent out. The Holy Spirit working in and through us and this faith community to bring Jesus' presence into this world. Surrounded by a great cloud of witness every time and place, we join as saints of God, disciples of Jesus, working together to bring peace and healing and wholeness into this broken world. The Holy Spirit working in us and through us, this great cloud of witness to bring Jesus' presence into the world. Today, this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing. Empowered by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, working in and through us, the very presence of Jesus comes into the world today and every day. Thanks be to God.
Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Anoint your spirit, all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, those living under oppression, people living with disability, those living with pain. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries and congregations and ministry sites. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear us now as we pray the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we
serve the Lord.